welcome everybody to our Heart Warrior Meet for September. Very warm welcome to all of you, wherever you are, Heart Warriors. I hope that you guys are all well and uh, that you have lots of inner experiences that we can discuss today. This Heart Warrior Meet with Jeff and I. Hey, Jeff, can you say hi to everybody real quick? Yes. Hey, everybody. Sorry, I was muted for a second. I'm very happy to be okay. here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this meet once a month is uh, really for us to discuss rather than us to lecture or anything. Obviously, we're going to comment on your guys' uh, experiences and sharing and uh, questions. But for us, it's mostly uh, just to be there for you. Besides, um, you know, for those of you who have weekly or uh, bi-monthly coaching sessions. So a welcome to all of you. What is your overall sort of state right now? You can share into the microphone or text us here. Jeff, while everybody's thinking, um, we're going to be talking a little bit about the most recent marathon. So not all of you here have been part of this marathon, but I think it's quite, it, it was a really, really deep experience for all of us. I, I think that's safe to say, and it, it's quite timely. I think there were some things that we really need to talk about because they also link into the times that we are in. What was your experience, Jeff, uh, with these three marathon days and maybe continuing right after? <laughs> um, the Grace Redemption one is, is always powerful because you, you get into this really cool space of like not only connecting and dealing with what's in the way, but you also get into creating. And um, I think a lot of times that that brings a different spin on things because it's actively going into playing with creation, you know, playing with like, what could I do? What comes up for me? What if I, if I had open space, what would I do with it? And um, once you get past kind of some of the restrictions of that, I think it's really a beautiful spot. So that one's always fun. Um, and can typically as you, and this is true of any marathon we do where, you know, as the process keeps going, it seems to, expand further and let us get past some of those restrictions even if it's just you know for a day or two but we have that reference feeling come in so for me it was the, you know that feeling i really enjoy that um but then that last day where you work in the garden you work on co-creation um a lot of times we forget to do that we forget to play we forget to open up what could happen because um, our mind gets in the way and says it has to be this way it has to be this way it should be this we get all judgmental and um and we get out of that that beauty of just allowing, and that's really fun. So to me, the the Grace Redemption Marathon is always about kind of getting to that day and letting that connection come through where we have these beautiful connections with the earth and with, you know, the lost parts of ourselves in day one and day two, and then you get into this day three where you can go into that. So it really felt as if, as we got past, you know, the first initial tensions that are always there with marathons, that people got more and more into the space and then it felt as if we got used to this idea of playing with what our heart's opening up to. It felt more vibrant, more loving. Yeah, it's interesting, right? The last day, especially here with the grace redemption. I mean, the, the, all the grace modalities, the 12 different grace modalities, they're all they're designed to build upon another. So after the Grace Redemption comes the Grace Gaia Sophia and then the Grace Soul Monad and then the last and higher, highest vibratory Grace session is the Grace Soul Integrity. And we are entering a part of ourselves here that becomes more and more difficult to describe with words. So when, when we go into this creation mode in that last marathon day, as simple as it sounds, right? I mean, it's like, here, you got clean slate, you know, it's kind of like Green Lantern, if you guys are familiar with the comic world, <laughs> right? You can create anything you want, right? And there we're sitting totally stressed out about what to do with the space, right? And I forget sometimes that the way we treat 
the way we approach, the way we care for or nurture, the way we design, plan, or the absence thereof, the way we arrange meaningful things into, into this garden is a mirror of how we treat our life. How we treat our life, or better say, ourselves in our life. It's a very, very cool mirror of that. It shows us our, basically our unconscious attachments with things because in that sort of visualization world, right, where it's imagery and where literally we are the only ones in control of this, we can um, encounter those parts in us that we're not 100% aware of in our daily lives that are holding us back. So in that way, as beautiful or exciting it sounds, and you said the key word here, here Jeff, playing, mm -hmm. right? Uh, mm -hmm. It can be quite stressful. So it's usually uh, something challenging for people, especially when they do this process for the first time. Oh, yeah. It isn't until we realize, 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 right? Like this, ah, you know, this light bulb comes on and you say, it's like, I'm in control of this. And this isn't about what other people uh, think of my garden or how they see it. That, you know, all these things that we struggle with in our day-to-day -day life where we see ourselves through the eyes of others, all that falls away because there really isn't a way for anybody else to see it. Um, the other interesting part in regards to others is, and this was something that we discussed in session eight amongst the co-facilitators, because this came forward in all of your guys' um, uh, energy processes, is it, how are you relating your garden to the outside world? Do you see other people in there? Do you feel like you have to protect your garden or do you want it to expand? How did this, this go for you, Jeff? Because on the third day, um, we didn't uh, facilitate together. So I'm not sure. How did this go for you? Like where, you know, where people were starting to build walls around their gardens or what, how was that received from your end? Um, the first session, um, the morning one was just like, it wasn't even possible. Like a lot of people felt, and like at least it felt the way for the group, it was really difficult. It was almost like there was like a lot of, I can't, there's no way, this isn't right you know there's and it was just like restriction which is not unusual because when we first go into play a lot of times our mental side will come in we forget when we were kids we didn't have this mental overlay and we didn't have this like excitement about things we don't have the judgment there so that was really challenging um we we forget what it's like to see things as a child's view um as it went into the i didn't do the first the, the, the second session but the third session was very so maybe something happened between and, and even in the first session it got lighter as we kept going but i assume that something must have occurred in the second session we didn't get a chance to talk too much about it where it became more capable or more open to this uh, because the third session was very there were some restrictions right off the bat sure there was some, a little bit of fear a little bit of doubt that kind of thing but then it was much more open much more like it's okay to try these things there didn't feel to be as much defense or as much restriction um you know whereas in the first session like you know i was joking with some of the with the coaches you know like you know just go do something go play with it go have fun like you know you know like have your inner child go and just do, smash things a little bit just so you get into that and then start digging with the dirt do something to get that shift going um and as that happened then it switched from like fighting against it to going with it um and the third session though it was very open though at that point so there was not a lot of restriction or i didn't feel any like real major wall building concerns or anything well you you referring to the third session as me as, as really being the ninth and the last session of the marathon i could right. be in that one because we were doing the business training right yeah so uh, the eighth session or the second session of that day uh, was very, very interesting and super insightful. And I didn't have the time to write a report really for it because there was so much going on and I was talking to so many of you. Uh, it just happened to be lined up that way that I had the opportunity to talk to many of you uh, due to your regular sessions. And 
the interesting part was that it really uh, showed us uh, the way back to that we have the choice yeah mm -hmm. but that we also need to uh, keep an eye on how we are treating our garden not not in regards to nurturing but how we actually want things to interact with the world um you know there was a the, the notion in the beginning of the session was that everybody was playing in their sandbox right like that was the the the, the previous session to that one where we had to learn to play but then you know there came a sort of a boredom with that to a degree yeah because at some point you know you have to make choices what you want yeah what what you want where you know how you want it to look like or how you want it to feel like and um, the the deeper energetic process this is mostly sixth and seventh chakra uh, the only resistance is there which still you know our third chakra that's always our our ego our self the the you know the the one that wants to control it and uh, push and um, you know wants it in a certain way that uh, was there still there was a, a sort of low degree of distraction from that but it was really about recognizing that we cannot approach our life by just looking at all the things that we don't want so at that point the participants you all you know you were okay with creating things but there was the notion that you were trying to avoid the things that you don't want and there was a bit of a focus on that that needed to be shifted so the shift was indeed uh, pretty significant there in the eighth session from these you know i can't yeah i can't uh you know like energizing that unconsciously uh, being afraid of something developing or feeling the need to protect something um, you know, and realizing that we are energizing the lack or the fear um, with that and, and turning that around into choice and asking ourselves if what's important, more important to us, if we want to protect our garden and have it like kind of like a solid Tudor uh, type of singularity, or if we want to grow and uh, in that latter case, uh, that we also have to include other people. We have to allow other people in. We can't uh, see it as a sort of a static thing. Yeah, so uh, it was actually really, really beautiful. It, it, for most participants, it, it, it made it or it came to awareness that there needs to be an exchange. And that that exchange, this, you know, sort of giving and receiving, if you will, needs to be in balance. So it was actually really beautiful, the, the eighth session on the last day, um, because it really showed us, you know, that life, yeah, uh, uh, here played out in that uh, sort of garden design, uh, is something that needs to have freedom to grow, but it does need to have rules as well, or, you know, certain, I don't want to say goals, you know, if the overall goal is expansion and growth and and evolution, uh, we don't really have to have that, like a particular goal with it, just that our garden can flourish and that it obviously requires us to nurture it and also to allow others to be there and to exchange and to collaborate and to allow this sort of synergy to happen. Otherwise, it becomes meaningless, no matter how beautiful it is. There is no meaning if we cannot share it or if we cannot really place it um, within a larger whole. Yeah, and that then, you know, sort of brought up things. I'm glad that the last session then went uh, into more expansion because it that was supposed to be the session where we more or less bring all of that back together, where we connect all the pieces and see how redemption as a process of, you know, coming to terms with ourselves and obviously also our past. But that confessing ourselves doesn't mean to confess to somebody. It doesn't mean that we confess ourselves to something or somebody with some higher authority. Confessing ourselves basically means that we are stating to ourselves, yes, that's me. And yes, I'm here. And yes, 
this is what I want and this is what I need because this is who I am. That's really what confessing or confessing myself means. And in conjunction with redemption, it points at all the things that we need to let go of to finally do that. You know, the transgressions of the past or the regrets or the identity issues that we have, the maybe the, the lack of humbleness that was something on the first day that we uncovered. But most and foremost, and this, this was really the last day made that aware, uh, you know, the, the energetic process that was going on there, that we waste our time too much on meaningless things. Yeah, and that the, the pup, it lacks purpose. And that for us to feel something like a purpose in life, yeah, a motivation for life, we need to add more meaningful things to it. And meaningfulness is subjective, that's personal, that's individual. We need to make our life meaningful. There is nobody else that can do that. There's no higher authority that can give our life meaning. We all want somebody to tell us your fate is, you know, and when you're 55, you're going to do this. And, oh, cool, then I don't need to think about it. I don't need to do anything for it. Then I can just wait till I'm 55. That's literally what our ego says. This is an active process. We have to give things meaning. And only then can we feel fulfillment. So in that, for me personally, this marathon was very much reflecting the collective situation right now here in September 2021. How can we make sense of all of that is going on? And how can we still feel meaning and purpose in times where everything gets triggered at once, our fear of dying, our fear of loss, our identity crisis, our humbleness, our you know fear of getting punished for the sins of our past, the regrets and uh, you know things about our body and yeah, why didn't we see this earlier and all this kind of stuff. The main thing is to to take this opportunity now, now that you're awake and aware, you make a choice and you give that meaning. And that will reveal purpose to you. There's, there's often a connection to the things that you've been doing all along, just not as consciously as you should have, because then this purpose would have been more clear to you to begin with. Yeah, and sometimes we struggle with uh, those choices because sometimes it gets hard. I guess it's safe to say right now it's kind of hard for everybody. So, yeah, we might as well take it full frontal, yeah, and work with it directly, aware and awake. And, you know, give that which we have, that, that which, which we can, that which we can change, meaning and purpose. Sorry, Jeff, I, uh, as always, went off <laughs> into the deep end there. It's okay, I'm used to it. <laughs> it's the summary of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so how does this... No, it's well put, just so you know. I mean, like, I totally agree. It is a reflection of where things are and that it's up to us if we want this to change if we want to work on this and make it as powerful or as effective as you want or whatever word you want to put there it's up to us yeah. absolutely yeah many yeah. of you are going through some health challenge for example or maybe fi financial challenges those are all new beginnings guys yeah grace redemption yeah that comes with this absolution energy is there to teach us that every day is a new beginning if you give it that meaning, you can choose to make today the new beginning of you, for example, expressing more body love or expressing more spiritual connection or you um, 
caring more for uh, things such as the environment or your relationships or, you know, you know what I mean. This is your choice and our ego does not like to be reminded of that. So we need to understand, and this is something that we experience with every marathon. <clears throat> I mean, life literally being sort of the, the huge big marathon, <laughs> right? Is that our ego first resists? Yeah, that's okay. You all know this already. That's why you guys are heart warriors. Because you've already gone through uncovering basically the resistance of your ego. Now it's just a matter of, okay, how are you going to deal with it? What are you going to do with this now? So how did this arrive on your end? Even if you weren't in the marathon, you may have already, you may have picked up on those energies yourself without being in the marathon. There we just worked it to the detail um, of our own energy system. Um, but that's uh, really just our uh, interpretation of things. How did this um, feel for you guys individually, subjectively, who is feeling, even if you weren't part of this particular marathon? How do you deal with transgressions of the past? How, you, how do you deal with regrets? How do you deal with recognizing something today that you couldn't see before? What do you learn from getting pulled into the past? Um, Yona, Yo, no, uh, this is Abigail speaking. Oh. Hi. One of the things that that came up for me is um, is uh, is is um, being able to to try try to find a different way of doing things. And, and so um, during and after the marathon, I was having quite a, a tough time at, at work with um, a particular colleague, and mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, and I actually, uh, I completely did the opposite of, of what I normally do and I actually addressed the situation <laughs> rather than ignoring it and pretending it wasn't there and then getting all resentful. Sorry about my dog. Just a moment, I'm just good. I did the opposite of my normal behaviour and actually addressed it uh, and I addressed it with other colleagues and I didn't actually address it directly with the woman herself but I, I did address it indirectly with other people quite quite clearly and um, and I was so nervous I was like so nervous because it's just not what I do at all and um, but the whole experience was just really uh, enlightening because um, it showed me how much I, I am a part of my own problem <laughs> and, <laughs> and, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, glad no, you I'm... laugh about it. I only laugh because you laughed, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it just—it was just like kind of like uh, I'm still kind of coming to terms with it. But um, yeah, how much we create our own problems, um, and uh, it's like how much we are a part of our own problem. Of course, that's always about our perception and where we're at and and what we're doing. Um, but what I saw was um, that when I I stood up for myself and when I actually addressed um, something that was concerning me, which I have every right to do, um, then people actually responded quite quite well, very well to me. You know, there there was a dialogue, there was an opening, and that that really uh, surprised me. And also, it helped me realise what my payoff was, um, kind of from my old behaviour, um, uh, because yeah because by actually having to stand up and stand up for myself um mm -hmm. it also didn't leave me space to to hide uh, and um and like uh, kind of get that payoff of being a victim i suppose um so yeah and so that kind of really kind of went into that whole thing about kind of humbleness as well and um not being a victim but also but feeling vulnerable you know kind of like allowing myself yes. to feel vulnerable yeah but it's surprising how you don't feel humiliated at all right because people actually no, recognizing oh. this is yeah. in this is a yeah. huge uh, uh, sharing here thank you abigail this is huge because i mean you know we talk about this all the time that we need to kind of push ourselves a bit uh, out of our comfort zone and so forth but it is you know, it is that moment when we actually do it. It doesn't matter if we've understood it intellectually. It is that moment when we do this, 
and we realize that, by the way, this is what you just described, Abigail, is exactly what I meant earlier with confessing yourself. You are being honest with yourself and you're expressing it to the outside. You're stating it in whatever situation uh, that may uh, you know, relate to. And what happens is actually that the world responds positively because now you're there. And you know, you said, oh yeah, well, you were afraid and, and felt vulnerable at first because you couldn't hide anymore. But heck yeah, that's the whole point of being here and being present is to not be invisible. It's to say, hey, you know, I mean, maybe it's just me, you know, but what I'm feeling here or what I'm seeing or what I'm experiencing doesn't feel healthy or it doesn't feel conducive at work. It would all, you know, would have to be related to the job or project description, of course. Um, what are your guys' perception, right? Because you opened up something there. It's not vulnerable. It's, it has a lot to do with our communication. Obviously, if we only speak up to point fingers and blame somebody so that this payoff that you mentioned right can be maintained yeah can can so you can still get that oh i can't do my work because of her or because of him that does not open up other people that makes other people be become afraid that uh, they might be blamed or maybe they're guilty or it contracts everything but if you speak up and um, you know speak up for for really how you're seeing it and you, you're able to say that in a way without pointing fingers, without comparing or uh, judging, all right, then there is a very, very high chance that this is going to lead to a higher vibratory solution. Very cool. Yeah, so we need these kind of experiences in 3D, right, to understand what integration is really about. Integration is not about having all these cool experiences during energy sessions, uh, transmissions, or meditations. Integration is to actually feel the courage in the moment and to feel reminded from within yourself. It's like you reminding yourself, hey, you know, if you keep doing the same thing that you've always been doing, there's not going to be any different results. So if you really want to change this, you're going to have to change something. So we laughed about when you said how much you are part of the problem. Um, some, some, one of you said many, many years ago, which I find actually a bit sort of more positive even, is to get yourself out of the way. All right. So you're not the problem, but you are sometimes, uh, you know, there, there are different variations. You are part, you become part of the problem if you hold back or if you more or less become silently complicit. And when it comes to redemption and absolution, guys, it's really important to understand about your own psyche and also the, the energetic attachments with that. If you become silently complicit with something, you will, you will take on that energy. And it will, on, on a psychological as well as energetic level, require you to cope with that, even if you are not the one that produced the problem. By not saying something or by staying, right? Sometimes it's just smarter to walk out. But sometimes, like in Abigail's situation, we can't just walk out. We have to deal with it. By not saying anything, by hiding yourself, by avoiding confrontation, you are now becoming part of the problem. Actually, more precisely, the problem is becoming a part of you. And this is uh, why so many of us have difficulties changing things in our life because we feel guilty for all the times and occasions where we have not said anything or where we have hidden or hidden ourselves or where we uh, prefer to be the victim. Yeah that we have to carry, that carries on, that's recorded in us. And ultimately, when we talk re redemption and self-absolution, you know, which is basically 
uh, sort of the, the the actual process of of self reconciliation, re reconciling these things that are actually not according to our higher expression, then we will have to deal with them later on some energetic level or on some physiological health level or uh, on some relationship level. Do you guys all understand that? It's really, really important that you ask yourself at all times if you are actually okay with this. Because there are some things, no matter how afraid you are, no matter how tricky the situation is, there are some things in life, guys, no matter how you twist or turn them, they're not okay. And if you don't say anything, if you don't at least set a boundary or say, I'm not part of this, yeah, I'm not supporting this, you don't have to fix it and you don't have to accuse. You can just say, I disagree with this or I'm not participating in this. If you're not doing that, there will be an energetic attachment in you that will trigger your guilt or you know, lead to you um, sort of burying these parts in you as uh, you know, what we then later um, detect as energetic attachments. Yeah, and it can show up in many, many ways. I completely agree with that. Yeah, it's like you'll all of a sudden wonder why you're tired, you wonder why you're having issues, you wonder why you're having these emotions show up. Absolutely. Because you're not challenging it. Any more comments or insights, thoughts that you would like to share about this inner redemption process? There's something that happened to me a couple of days ago that I would like to share with you that made me feel really good. And I don't know if you can see how I got there, but this has to do with complicity. Um, you know, complicity by uh, association or proximity, <laughs> but not saying anything when you witness something. I was walking down the streets. I do a lot of things walking. Um, it's actually become my only exercise because I sit so much here in front of the computer that uh, I try to utilize any opportunity to just walk uh, wherever I can. And um, as an ex-marathon runner, you know, walking two miles or three miles to a grocery store or whatever is no big deal for me. That's, you know, I, I love doing that. It's, I have this sort of power walk style um, and I do that. And um, I was doing that the other day and it, it was during the day, it was light out and um, I could feel how my energy was really, really stressed out because I had promised to be somewhere at a certain time and I had to rush. And it's not like when you drive a car, you know, you feel like, okay, it, it, it's the traffic's fault if I come late, right? <laughs> in this case, it was just me and my legs, right? Uh, me getting there from here to there, uh, having left a little late. So I needed to put a, a few extra gears in and I, my energy was very pushy. I could feel that at that moment because I didn't want to be late. And I passed by uh, some, you know, innocent <laughs> pedestrian. <laughs> I felt guilty, actually. I kind of apologized internally because I, my energy was so pushy. He, he could probably feel this, um, but he didn't. He was quite relaxed. He was just like sort of walking by. And um, I was walking, I kept walking and this guy was walking behind me. And all of a sudden a car started to slow down next to me. And it went slower and slower, and the and the window rolled down. And you know, I I think I can speak for most women here, but you kind of get used to this to not respond to that kind of stuff. That happens all the time. Unfortunately, is it's it's part of our our day daily experience uh, to be yelled at from a car or whatever. And I found that really weird. Uh, so that kind of in my pushy energy, I felt like. <laughs> this was like, what the heck? What does this person want, right? So I ignored it. I walked by it and at, at the intersection, 
um, the, the car wouldn't go. I didn't know where the car wanted to go because I had to cross the road and I, you know, and I looked into the car and there was a lady in there and she looked at me and she's like, ma'am, are you being followed? Are you stressed? And then I realized what she had picked up on. She had picked up on my energy here being like totally stressed out. And I looked at her and I said, no, I actually apologized. And I said, thank you. Thank you for caring. And the reason I'm sharing this with you guys is because this is what we don't see enough of, okay? There's lots of studies that have been done um, in regards to uh, sort of uh, victim situations uh, in public uh, or even in, in, in house and in families and so forth where people don't speak up. And the studies have showed have shown uh, that um, when one person speaks up, it strengthens and empowers everybody else. In this case, this wasn't so much of a public situation. It was just between me and the lady in the car. Uh, but it reminded me of another situation that I was in where somebody was, a, a male was mistreating a female. Uh, this was at a dog park and there, I mean, close to hitting, not, not quite yet, but it was getting there, okay? Where there were at least 20 people around and everybody was looking away. Everybody was sort of, you know, just caring for their own stuff. And I stood up and I walked in between. I just walked in between. I took my dog, walked in between, and disrupted this energy flow between these two people. And then I faced the guy, and I asked him if he thinks that this is okay. I said, I don't know what your relationship is with this woman, but you're like a you know, six foot three guy, and this is a five foot lady here. This doesn't make me feel good having to watch that. And I'll never forget the, the, the look on the face of the woman. She got her dog and got out. And that guy got all like blah, 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 and he was like, you know, calling me names and whatever. But the situation was dispelled. I'm not recommending to you to do, you know, you guys to do that. Um, that's me being a trained martial artist. But I do want to let you know the power of speaking up, the power of speaking up, because it helps every, me doing that, do the attention of everybody else in the dog park. And all of a sudden, these 20 people that had completely ignored the distress of the other woman, prior to me interfering, they all paid attention to what I was doing. They were literally energetically standing all behind me, not knowing me, not knowing the guy, not knowing anything, but they, felt like I felt and I was the only one speaking up and that guy was just like blah, 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 you know uh, cussed me out and left the dog park and then obviously afterwards was a lot of talk uh, and everything and I didn't really want to engage with this because for me to watch something happen that no matter how you twist or turn it even if it is a couple yeah, who, who are having a fight when a man and don't misunderstand me here. This isn't meant to be some kind of feminist talk. I would say the same thing about a dog, you know, when a 100-pound dog attacks a 10-pound dog, okay? When a, a man uses his physical size to intimidate and uh, literally scare uh, another person that is way, and especially if it's a woman, uh, way uh, smaller and, um, you know, uh, uh, restricting her in her space that is not okay never never so speaking up confessing yourself speaking truth making a stance those things are all very closely related and we need to find out for ourselves where we allow these things to become our problem because when we don't speak up, we are allowing them to be to become our problem. And as a consequence, like Abigail shared, 
we become part of the problem. This can also be transposed into our collective situation right now easily. There are so many things that we're seeing in regards to the environment, the political development, the COVID development and so forth, where we have to take a very close look to how we are responding to this. If we are bystanders that are not saying anything, if we are followers, that's fine. But if we follow something, we need to understand that that we then take on the energy of that experience. So whatever it is that we make a stance for, we have to have the awareness to understand what that is that we are saying yes to. And my tip for you, heart warriors, is that you first and foremost train yourself to say yes to your true self, always. And then start saying no to the things that are obviously unhealthy for you, that are obviously restricting you, even if it is your own ego. <laughs> you can have discussions with your own ego. I mean, don't have them out loud because then you might, they might prescribe you medications. <laughs> but you guys know what I mean, right? You're going to have to stay on top of what you're saying yes to because that's what you are allowing into your energy field as basically a recording of the time. Another example here, not to be too intense about this, but kind of is, <laughs> um, is the example of Nazi Germany. How much disinformation and propaganda, coercion and pressure has led people to not say anything? And what that has produced for them individually and collectively, till today, still not healed. This is three generations. Our, my grandparents, our grandparents that were alive at the time, probably no longer, okay? And it still reverberates through us intergenerationally. So these are um, basically from the individual to the collective and the karmic, the, the ripples that are being produced by us here in this lifetime that we get to spend to bring our higher self into expression. And when many humans and especially, you know, basically too many humans, I mean, it's not up to me. I guess research has shown that the planet can carry, can feed like 16 billion people. But when people live in so close proximity to another, that there's a lot of problems that occur, sociological, psychological, behavioral problems. That's obvious. But all that really means is that we have to, you know, roll up our sleeves and do something about that, not like as in rebellion or you know, going, uh, you know, going against something, but as in becoming more aware of what we are contributing and how we are taking on some of these energies. And if we're okay with that, if our integrity allows us to say, okay, by not saying no, Okay, I'm done. <laughs> these are these uh, deeper spiritual aspects of redemption. <laughs> so, Jeff, can you say something lighter? <laughs> you want me to follow that? <laughs> you can tell a joke. <laughs> are you done? No, I'm joking. No, it was really cool. No, I, I think it's really important what you covered there. Um, I think the lightness comes from the practice where you realize that, you know, by incorporating things that we learn from marathons or what you just talked about, how, you know, you stand strong for what, you know, enlightens you, what builds you up, what strengthens your stance in a positive way is vital because as we get used to it, then we get sensitive to it. And when we get sensitive to it, we'll start to notice where else we're not doing it. 
So I, if you're a positive, you want that it's a practice. You know, and the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Yeah. 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 That's a big one. The more yeah. you do it, the easier it becomes. It becomes your second nature. Actually, you, you finally become your first nature. <laughs> well, you remember it. Like, you remember how important it is to actually do these things. You know, because it hurts if, like, you've mentioned many times, I think I like how you put it, you always say, because it hurts if you don't. Mm -hmm. Your body becomes so sensitive to that, that it actually causes you pain. You know, um, and it may not be like you have, you know, severe heart attack or, you know, stomach ache or whatever. It doesn't matter, you know, anything like that, but you feel it. You feel how it's hurting you. You feel how it's collapsing your energy. And that's a point where you've already made it very effective. I mean, we always had that pain, likely. We just didn't ignore it. We didn't notice it. You know, so the fact that you begin to stand for these things that vitalize you, that allow you to expand further, allow you to grow as you get better and better at it, 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 it feels right. Not only does it, does it seem right, not only does it make sense, and even logically, it now begins to feel right, and that's the important part. Yeah, this, this feeling that Abigail described, right? How cool yes. that yeah. feels when you actually yeah. do this and how you see how everything opens up doors yeah. open up people are starting to respond to that because it empowers them as well yeah. it has that ripple effect yeah <laughs> uh just a quick look here guys uh to the september calendar that uh as most of you know affects you uh in various ways or not affects you but um you know your your monthly uh, sessions um we will have uh, i've made it a little easier now uh, really there's only the black sessions which are the uh, the group transmissions and then the the dark red here those are sessions just for you as card warriors uh, we will have our live transmission on saturday the 18th at 10 a.m this is a session where we meet on skype and actually type during an energy session okay so this is something that many of you are not used to but those of you who have come to these live sessions have have come to enjoy them i think we've done three so far anybody here who wants to share their experiences just real quick like as opposed to like say a silent uh, transmission that you do from your own uh from your home or you know, with yourself uh what do these live transmissions feel like how are they for you on your end you basically get to, hey there yeah you basically get to peek behind the curtain right where the trans coaches amongst us they were used to this because that's what we do we work with the field and you individually and talk during a session yeah there we go go ahead yeah, I, I really enjoy it because um, um, for me, uh, it makes the experience a lot more real. Uh, so I'm sure that it's not me just like sitting here with my imagination or something like that. So it makes it a lot more concrete. Mm -hmm. um, it, it gives me um, instantaneous feedback. Uh, and then and then also um, there's a shared experience, which also is a part of um, a really kind of grounding it in reality. Uh, because other people are on the thread as well so it, it's kind of like you can see the kinds of experiences that they're having and they're sharing and then that also helps you to relate to what the, the experience that I am having as well so um, I really like it I, I, I love it I really really appreciate okay. it thank you thank you Abigail yeah I like what you said there's a curiosity almost uh, how other people experience things and the, the cool thing for me is always to see how even though we all use different words to describe things or even though we might feel it differently like you know somebody might feel it more uh, sort of in their body and other people have visuals and other people have more like emotional stuff come forward and when you put all this together you begin to see how one and the same thing can actually be experienced so differently and yet still be the same sort of energetic aspect that is being worked with it's very cool it, th those yeah, 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 it, yeah the other thing i'll just add is it feel it feels very safe 
So if people are thinking about it, I mean, it, it feels safe. It feels uh, you, you don't feel vulnerable. I mean, obviously, some things because of the process, you might feel a bit kind of like raw about something. But the process feels very safe and there feels like there's a very high level of trust within the group. I, I always feel very safe as well. So that might be important for some people if they you know, thinking about I doing think for it. you it was for you it was quite important, Abigail, wasn't it? I mean you you weren't exactly the kind of person that was easy to share. <laughs> um looking back <laughs> at your at your beginnings. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's true. Yeah, it's true. I mean yeah. not to not to uh, uh, single you out here, but since you can laugh about some of these things now, right? Uh, do you recall how long it took you from like when you started to um, participate in, in energy sessions? Um, I remember uh, probably the true self sessions, right? Until mm -hmm. you actually started to share like in a way that you mm -hmm. would talk or, or, or share in the form. There was a huge, time between yeah, that uh, i think it was years <laughs> i think so too yeah it yeah, was yeah, it was yeah it's, yeah. it's very cool yeah. i mean these live sessions aren't for everyone i uh, i can see that okay but uh what every girl just said is really important it feels very very safe and there's obviously no judgment and nothing it's it's actually quite inspiring um they are voluntary so the session will still proceed for you if you don't come to the skype thread okay so th there will still be the normal transmission for you but it is a transmission that is basically open house okay you can come uh to the live thread where um mostly me uh you know is is kind of reporting about what is going on in real time now this can be very interesting and it also helps to build a lingo to build this energetic vocabulary. Um, other than that, uh, the specials here in this month are uh, the the energetic visioning transmission uh, marathon day uh, next weekend, guys. This is is one of my favorite energy awareness trainings uh, because here we're learning how to safely vision, lucid dreaming, and uh, it's it's basically the continuation of the Grace Redemption Marathon where uh, we go into this uh, creative space and learn how to do this safely and how to interact with, uh, you know, uh, some of the things that we are encountering there. Uh, this could be energies, light, uh, colors, but also beings and so forth. Uh, there is a, a component here uh, that has to do with etheric protection that is being taught in there. So this is a definitely sort of something advanced, but you as a heart warriors are very well, very well equipped. Um, we will then uh, continue. You can see, I mean, the session selection is always in tune with the energies, the collective energies of the month. There is a uh, shadow clearing. Um, Jeff will be uh, facilitating this one. Uh, then we at, on the equinox we have the collective, uh, the karmic collective clearing. I would say this is a very important one if you can make it to that one. It's at 3 p.m. an unusual time, but I try to to stick with uh, you know the the actual planetary times for those uh, session times. Um, this is literally you uh, learning and and engaging and out vibrating, sort of the collective karma. Uh, that we are steering into, uh, then of course the tune up again uh, towards the end of uh, the month and the Gaia Sophia Marathon then uh, in the last three days of the month, uh, something that is uh, basically building on the Grace Redemption, uh, even more spirituals, very, very beautiful. And uh, just as a reminder real quick, and I know some of you guys have already tested this out. Since yesterday, daily 11.30 a.m. Florida time, I'm doing the energy prayer every day. This is an, an interaction with people who are coming there. It's on YouTube live. You have to go to my YouTube channel called Transcodes. And um, there you can see if you, if you subscribe to the channel, you get reminders for those live events. Um, it's basically like uh, on Skype, but uh, with a larger reach. And uh, we are 
basically writing our own prayer every day. Um, it's uh, not affiliated with trans cults, really. I just I'm just using my YouTube channel. It's a free event for everybody. It's not doesn't have anything to do with energy work or anything like that. However, obviously, I'm calling it energy prayer, so uh, to signify that it's not just some something based on a particular faith or denomination. So that's 20 days a day, 20 hour, uh, 20 minutes a day to do exactly what Jeff said earlier, to cultivate this, to to practice being fully awake and aware and interacting with your higher self, giving it meaning and bringing it alive through your words yeah, and your deeds in prayer together. Very, very beautiful and very high vibratory event, especially if you're feeling a little low. That's a great opportunity for you to tune back in. Yeah, every day at 11.30 a.m. All right, guys, we have to come to an end here. Thank you so much. Yes, for definitely. Coming. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Abigail, for being our only <laughs> you know, live share here today. But it was You're welcome. You <laughs> in. Thank you. And, uh, there were lots of other people here, very, very silent today. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Brian. Back to you. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Tina Marie. I know. Yes, thank you, Becky. Awesome that you guys were here. See you next month and um, wishing you, if you're in the United States, a happy Labor Day weekend, tomorrow's holiday. And uh, yeah, we'll see each other very soon. Latest tomorrow, 11.30 a.m. <laughs> Bye all.